A couple months ago, I got a call from my friend Nami saying that conditions were once again looking ideal for carpenter ants to have a nuptial flight. And although I was about to hop on a plane early the next morning, I might not get another chance. The species I'm after is Campanotus CaO2. For over a year now, I've been trying to raise a colony of these massive and majestic carpenter ants, but I've had two failed attempts that were unfortunately my fault. Yet, I am determined once more to try again. The question was, would I be able to find any, or did I drive all the way out here for nothing? Tonight would be an adventure of, oh, hey, there's one. Well, that was quick. I kind of thought that the whole search would make for a full episode, but I guess not. There were queens crawling around all over the place, thousands of them, all looking for a good spot to dig their chambers. As you can see from my clearly experienced hands, I have not caught many queens, so it took me a little while to get her in the capsule. But eventually I got her, and I wasn't the only one out there. Nami was there, I saw Francisco from last time, a handful of other people, and my brother. This is his channel, by the way. He makes remixes. We were all having fun hanging out, walking around, catching queens, and finding cool bugs. This is Myrmecocystis wheeleri, a beautiful golden-colored honeypot queen. And here's another Myrmecocystis testaceus, like the ones that I caught last time. But mostly, we saw the big CaO2 queens. Now, I just want to make a quick note here about overcollecting, because there were some people there collecting way more than they needed. Nami collected a bunch, but he has an actual business and permits, and he still doesn't collect more than he thinks he can sell. But a couple people had a bag with hundreds of queens, just for fun which is wrong and unethical. While going out and catching ants is great, I would say over-collecting means taking more than you can properly care for. I decided to take two home. This is Queen Midas III, carrying on the legacy of my favorite queen from last year, and accompanying her is Queen Aurum, which is the Latin word for gold. These two sisters have quite a journey ahead of them, not only because the founding stage is incredibly challenging for new queens, but because I'm about to attempt something kind of crazy, combining them into a single test tube to see if they can work together in founding a colony. Why is this a big deal? Well, there are two primary strategies that ants have when it comes to their queens. About 15 to 20% of species are polygynous, meaning they have multiple queens, allowing them to grow rapidly and spread quickly to new areas. Most ants, however, like Campanotus here, are monogamous, meaning the colony will only tolerate one queen on the throne. So then why would I put them in a tube together? Why risk what I've been trying to- oops, oh, <laughs> Queen Orum did not want to go in the tube. She had other plans to explore my desk. Once again, you can witness how incredibly skilled I am at scooping up queen ants. I'm just afraid that I'll accidentally squish her if I try and pick her up. But eventually, I got her into the tube. Where were we? Oh yeah. Why would I risk putting them in the same tube? Am I just cruel and enjoy watching animals fight? Well, aside from Pokemon, no. I have my reasons, but let's see if they accept each other first and then I'll explain. Queen Orum looked around at her new chamber smelling that she was not the only one there. Without delay, she approached Queen Midas, who slowly turned around to find that she too was not alone. Then to my relief, they exchanged a friendly greeting, but I still watched carefully, ready to intervene if things went south. While we watched these two get acquainted and used to each other's presence, let me tell you why I'm doing this. In the wild, there are actually a few major benefits to founding a colony together. With two queens to feed the brood, there are more resources to go around, usually resulting in larger first-gen workers. Two, you also get a bigger first generation of workers, which means you have a head start over other colonies because you can collect more food. And third, if one queen dies, her brood will be inherited by the other queen rather than die with her. This co-founding strategy is called pleomatrosis. Now in reality, the chances of them attacking each other at this stage are very low. They recognize that teaming up for now will increase their chances of success. And in nature, that's all that matters. Speaking of increasing their chances, I'm giving them some nectar to sustain them, since they will not eat again until their future children can bring them food. Now notice here that Queen Orum, the one drinking, has a smaller gaster than Queen Midas. She kept drinking, and drinking, and drinking, as I watched her gaster fill up with nectar. Queen Midas chose to hang back, 
but Queen Orum kept going back for more, trying to slurp up every last bit. I'm actually impressed. That would be like drinking an entire cooler full of fruit punch in one go. Oof. Once she was done, she went back to her sister and shared the meal with her. This act of teamwork told me that an alliance had been made and that the two queens would be okay. One week later, and we're about to find out if that's still the case. And they are besties, huddled up together nurturing their first eggs, which already puts them well ahead of the first Queen Midas who didn't lay any eggs until her third week, at which point she only had three. They already had eight. The following week, they were up to 25 eggs, which means that this partnership is working. Our dynamic duo is on a roll, but unfortunately, this heartwarming tale of sisterhood is not a permanent arrangement. You see, even if they're fine with ruling together, their daughters won't be. There will eventually come a point, usually after their first diapause, when the workers decide that they only need one queen. When that happens, they will choose the healthiest, most fertile queen to be their monarch, and the other will be ripped apart limb from limb. Nature is brutal. So my plan is to found them together to see what we can learn, then split the colony before that happens. After six weeks, they had cocoons. Seven cocoons and 13 larvae. This is where their chances of success go up. Because as larvae, they're growing in size and need to be fed from the queen's reserves. But once those larvae spin their cocoons, they no longer require nutrients until they're born. The following week, most of the brood had turned into cocoons. It was only a matter of time now before their first daughters would emerge from their little sleeping bags, which could happen any day now. But we'll save that for next time, as the story of the ants. No, I'm just kidding, we're not gonna end it there. We're so close. Three days later, I went back to check on the Queen Sisters. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the world, little ones. Can you guess which one is your real mom? Their color is so pretty. It looks like the second worker hasn't quite woken up yet after- Oh, uh, your highness, you're sitting on your child. Your, your majesty, stop! I think it's time for their first meal. Does anyone know what this is stuck to the cotton ball? It looks like a hollow cocoon with a booger inside. We weren't getting any takers for the nectar, and they were kind of freaking out being in the light. So I covered up part of the tube and waited. There were a few attempts made. Come on, girl. I know you're hungry. <sighs> No one came out to drink the nectar, but I noticed that they were already started on their second batch of eggs. Another week went by and we have a colony, which means we can officially welcome the minions of Midas back to the team. Queen Midas and Queen Orum have made it through the hardest part together. I know the emotional capacity of an ant doesn't exactly run very deep, but it must still be nice not to have gone through such a difficult struggle alone. Whether they consciously know it or not, I'd like to believe that at some capacity, these two sisters have bonded through their experience of becoming mothers and successfully bringing forth a new colony into the world. And yes, the sister queens will need to be separated at some point to avoid getting, uh, removed from power. But for now, it has been inspiring to witness one of nature's rarely observed partnerships that bend the rules of their species for the good of the colony. And of course, this is just the beginning of their story and their kingdoms. There are many more tales ahead for the minions of Midas, like figuring out exactly how and when to split the colony in half. But that's a tale for another time, as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.